Honoring Marie does not require being a Catholic or a voodoo initiate. It does require recognizing her as an elevated ancestor and adhering to her moral principles. I particularly applaud the walking the path section, which suggests ways of serving one's community as Marie would have done, by making rosaries, volunteering at a hospital, animal shelter, or veterans association, preparing bags of necessities for homeless people, and especially blessing dollar bills or coins, and leaving them in strategic places to be found by those in need. This part also tells how to create an altar to Marie Laveau and how to offer prayers and petitions to her. The third and longest part is the Laveau Magical Spiritual Legacy. Here I will entirely defer to Denise as an expert. Like me, she has drawn upon 19th century newspaper articles and interviews conducted during the late 1930s and 40s by the Louisiana Writers Project and the folklorist Harry Middleton Hyatt, with elderly New Orleanians who knew Marie Laveau and her family. But to this book knowledge, Denise also brings her own experience as an herbalist and a participant in African and Native American-based religions. The Laveau Magico-Spiritual Legacy delineates twelve categories of conjure in the Laveau tradition that Denise has identified through careful examination of historical accounts, as well as current practices among practitioners. In doing so, Denise was able to establish an actual magico-spiritual legacy that links past practices to present tradition. This part tells how to assemble spells and charms in containers, perform candle magic, recite and adapt Christian, specifically Catholic, prayers and conjure work, use dolls, and work in the graveyard. More than simply a list of spells and formulas, this information is presented with a rationale for each category and historical evidence for its inclusion in Marie Laveau's spiritual legacy. In The Magic of Marie Laveau, Denise Alvarado has separated the facts of Marie Laveau's life and legacy from the fantasies of some 20th century writers and persistent folk traditions that are sometimes not true. This is a goal we share in common. I hope listeners will enjoy and benefit from their journey through the three parts of this valuable book, The History, The Devotions, and The Magic. Carolyn Morrow Long Introduction If Marie Laveau were alive today, I truly believe she would be at the forefront of the hashtag Me Too and hashtag Black Lives Matter movements. I envision her standing in front of the White House as a hashtag sister resistor protesting the current administration's racist policies and attacks on health care and the environment. Instead of Alyssa Milano, it could have been Marie Laveau sitting behind Brett Kavanaugh at those now infamous SCOTUS hearings that mobilized the female warrior aspect of the country like never before. She would be advocating prison reform, laying the gree down at the border for those seeking a better life, or in need of asylum, and making sure no one forgets that there are children held in cages in internment camps for brown people right now, at this present moment, in post-slavery America. But the reason she would be doing these things might surprise a lot of people who are unfamiliar with her as a living, breathing human being. Marie Laveau is no myth. She is no mere legend while her reputation precedes her as the notorious voodoo queen of New Orleans. In reality, she was a free woman of color who ruled the city during antebellum New Orleans. This was no small feat. She was a devout Catholic, an independent businesswoman, a mother, and a healer who lived her life in accordance with the corporal works of mercy. Stories abound about her magical prowess, freeing men from the gallows and healing the sick from the brink of death. Her belief in Catholicism guided her life as well as her magic in such a...